Ecclesiastes is often misunderstood because some people see it as um, uh, a burned out, cynical old man kind of spitting at life on his way out and fed up. Um, and this is his parting shot. Uh, that, that is not the case. Uh, in fact, some of our English translations, I think, actually make it harder to understand Ecclesiastes because the key phrase in the entire book, and it shows up from cover to cover in the book, is the old King James Version translates it, vanity of vanities. That is, there is a certain, in some ways, some, many aspects of life are vain, futile. They just don't last. They will let you down. And uh, that is part of the message of Ecclesiastes. But one of our translations actually says meaningless, meaningless. Mm. And, but Ecclesiastes is not saying life is meaningless. It ends up by saying, we're going to die. We're going to stand before the Lord, give an account for how we live. That's very meaningful. Mm-hmm. So here's the point. The, Ecclesi- the message of Ecclesiastes is a both and, not an either or. The message of Ecclesiastes is both life is broken, accept that, and life is good, enjoy that. Hmm. Now, we tend to think, no, wait a minute, it's got to be one or the other. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, if you want to talk to me about how broken life is, how uh, short life is, how disappointing life is, um, it just slips through our fingers and fades away like a vapor and it's over forever. Okay, let's talk about that. And there's a lot of poetry written about that. There's great movies about that, a lot of music about that and so forth. Um, But Ecclesiastes also insists that everyday, common everyday life is a gracious gift from God and he commands us to enjoy it. Hmm. So, I couldn't be a Christian if Ecclesiastes were not in the Bible. This is such an honest book. It is a wholesome book. It is psychologically helpful. It is a positive, life-affirming book, even while utterly realistic. Mm. And it talks about the pain of life, the disappointment of life, the shortness of life, and says you've got to face that. You know, Don't build a life of illusion. But at the same time, God is touching you every day mm-hmm. in the simple things of every day. So taking a walk, holding hand for your wife, that with your wife, that's actually amazing. That shouldn't happen in a world like this. That there's such a thing as a neighborhood with sidewalks. I have a wife in this amazing relationship called marriage. She has this precious hand I just love to hold. It's the end of the day about dusk. We've had dinner. We go out and take a walk. We watch the sun go down. That's amazing. None of that should be happening. Mm. Mm -hmm. That is a huge kiss on the cheek from God above. And for us to scorn that or belittle that is really disrespectful toward God. Instead, the best way to respond to God in those endless moments of life is to rejoice and give thanks. Mm Mm-hmm. You mentioned looking down on the little things in life like that and sort of scorning that. Um, I'm going to walk in the light a little bit here because there was a season in life, and I actually still feel like I struggle with that a little bit, where I sort of think those little things are petty and Mm. I must be a little over simple to enjoy them, (laughs) you know? Um, Is that a human nature thing or... Is that partly what Ecclesiastes is instructing us? Exactly. You may be tempted to think you're too sophisticated or too busy for the little things, but no, slow down, enjoy them. They're from God. That's exactly right, because God is not too busy. Mm -hmm. God is not above the little things. Mm -hmm. God is present in the little things. So it talks about enjoying life with the wife whom you love during this short life. It talks about um, go eat your bread with joy. uh, let your um, um, wear your white garments. In other words, your party clothes. Mm-hmm. Um, eat your bread, drink your joy, uh, drink your wine, and so forth. 
it doesn't invite us to go to a feast because not everybody can af- afford that. Mm. But everybody can experience human life. And that's where God is present. There's nothing wrong with a feast. Yes. But, but you're not missing out on the best things in life if you can't afford that. Yes. The best things in life are right here, right mm. now. Hmm. Hmm. No, that's interesting. That's, yeah, that's, that's very interesting because that levels the playing field and that gives us less reason to look up, to idolize celebrities and rich people because we have access to the best things alongside them. That's right. Yeah, that is, mm. um, who was it written for Ecclesiastes? (laughs) Do, Do we know? Yes, we do. Because it says in chapter 11, rejoice, O young man, in your youth, and so forth. So Ecclesiastes was written by an older man who had really seen a lot of life for a younger man. Maybe 18, 20, 22 is more starting out in life. And it's the older man coaching the younger man in wisdom. Mm -hmm. In how to build a both and complete view of human life not to be deceived by false promises and not to miss out on the good, but sometimes sort of hidden blessings of God. Yes. When you preach the sermons, I wrote in in my Bible at the beginning of Ecclesiastes, you mentioned that there are three categories that we can find ourselves in. One is shallow optimism. Two is bitter cynicism, bitter cynicism. And three, simple wisdom. Yeah. And Ecclesiastes is trying to instruct us in the simple wisdom. Yeah. And I, I just thought of this. Did you say in those sermons or somewhere else that you would not be married to Janie if it wasn't for Ecclesiastes? I did that say that, book? yes, because um, it was the spring of 1969. I was a sophomore at Wheaton College. I was absolutely spellbound by this amazing girl I'd met. And, but I was not the only one who noticed her. <laughs> <laughs> so I was facing stiff competition. Yeah. And actually I was wondering, should I just give up? Because uh, maybe I'm not in her league. So I went back to my dorm room and I said, I need God's help with this. And I don't recommend this, okay? <laughs> this was, but God was just merciful to me. I said, okay, I'm gonna start reading the Bible and I'm gonna find the answer. <laughs> <laughs> so I was reading Ecclesiastes I came to chapter 11 and, and it said rejoice O young man in your youth and follow the sight of your eyes and the ways of your heart but know that God will bring you into judgment for these things now I know that that's not saying go enjoy yourself and then God will body slam you mm-hmm. that, that would be totally cynical because the judgment that chapter 11 refers to he, he returns to in chapter 12 saying God will bring everything into judgment, whether good or evil. Mm. So judgment simply reveals whether we have lived in this life with wisdom and integrity or not. And so anyway, I I read that verse and I said, okay, there's my answer from God. I mean, Uh. I am spellbound by this uh, amazing girl and God is saying, you like her? Well, go ask her out. <laughs> <laughs> How soon after that did you? Uh, very quickly. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. And I asked, I took her out to a nice uh, restaurant in the Chicago area, and I <laughs> asked her to go steady with me. And to my amazement, she said yes. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. first time? No, no. I uh, dated her a few times, but oh, okay. I was, I was kind of in danger of losing heart. Okay. So, <laughs> I put the pedal to the metal. 